Good day, students. Uh, in this clip, we're going to be going um, over the derivation of the uh, half angle identities. So let's go ahead and write down the instruction for the notes. Um, use use the double angle identities. Uh, to derive uh, the uh, half uh, angle identities, okay? So in this proof or derivation, we are assuming that uh, the double angle identities are, are true, okay? I have a clip going over how to derive the double angle identities from the sum and difference identities, and also I have a, a clip I'm showing that the sum of difference identities are in fact true. Okay, so you can go ahead and view that uh, on notjustshare.com. So let's go ahead and, and do this proof. Our uh, first one is going to be three parts. We're doing sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, for the first one, we're going to prove that prove that uh, sine alpha over two is equal to plus or minus the square root of uh, 1 minus cosine alpha over 2, okay? All right, so um, we're going to start by stating the double angle identities. We have five uh, choices to choose from, but the uh, one we're going to be using for this proof um, is uh, cosine theta. I mean, cosine 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine square theta. Okay, so this is what we're going to be using. All right, so um, what we're going to do first, we're going to let theta be equal to alpha over 2. Okay, let theta be equal to alpha over 2. I'm going to substitute alpha over 2 for theta in this equation. So that's going to yield cosine 2 times alpha over 2 equals 1 minus 2 sine square alpha over 2, okay? So remember our goal is to get sine alpha over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to use algebraic processes to isolate sine alpha over 2, all right? We'll get rid of the 1, the 2, and then the square. The resulting expression will be sine alpha over 2 on the left, and on the right side, hopefully, we should have this uh, expression, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do it step by step. So first thing we're going to do... Um, on the left side here, you notice we're doubling half of an angle, so these divide out. The 2 and the 2 divide out, so we're going to have cosine alpha is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square alpha over 2. Now we're going to uh, subtract 1 from both sides. So that gives us um, cosine alpha minus 1 equals negative 2 sine square alpha over 2, all right? Now, our next thing we're going to do is, uh, how about we divide both sides by negative 1, all right? So I divide the left side by negative 1 and divide the right side by negative 1. So what does that give me? That gives me, uh, let me switch it around, 2 sine square alpha over 2. And on the left side, when I divide this by negative 1, I'm going to have minus and plus, so I can write it as 1 minus cosine alpha, okay? All right, now our next step, divide both sides by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So that yields sine square alpha over 2 equals 1 minus cosine alpha divided by 2, all right? Now, to isolate sine, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, take the square root of the left side, and the square root of the right side, and then my I'm going to have sine alpha over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha divided by 2. All right? So that goes your answer for uh, the half angle identity for sine, okay? So, this is what we're supposed to prove.
All right. So now let's move on to part two. Part two. Uh, we're going to prove that. Prove that. Um, cosine alpha over two equals plus or minus the square root of one plus cosine alpha divided by two. Okay, so this is what we're going to prove. All right, so uh, we're going to use one of the five uh, double angle identities. The one we're going to use in this case is cosine uh, two theta equals two cosine square theta minus one. If you notice, we're using only the cosine double angle identities to arrive at our derivations here. Okay. Okay, so to uh, do this, first thing we're going to do, we're going to let, uh, we're going to let theta equals alpha over 2, all right? Now, I'm going to substitute alpha over 2 for theta on both sides of this equation. So, we'll have cosine 2 instead of theta. I'm going to have alpha over 2 equals 2 cosine square. And instead of theta, I'll have alpha over 2 here. Also, minus 1. All right, now uh, on the left side, you notice that uh, these two and these two divide out. So you're going to have cosine alpha equals 2 cosine square alpha over 2 minus 1. Okay, so to get uh, cosine alpha over 2 by itself here, we're going to get rid of 1 first, move 1 over, and then 2, and then the square. In that order, using algebraic processes, and hopefully we'll get our desired equation. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do it. First thing we're gonna do is get, move the one over. We add one to both sides. All right, let's switch this around while we add it. So we have two cosine square alpha over two equals cosine alpha plus one. Okay? Next, we're going to divide both sides by two. Divide by two, divide by two. And that yields um, cosine square alpha over 2 equals cosine alpha plus 1 over 2. Okay, because these two twos divide out. Now, to get rid of the square, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So, root the left and root the right. And that's going to give me uh, cosine uh, alpha over 2 because... Um, this square root and the square cancel out equals plus or minus the square root of cosine alpha plus 1 over 2. Okay, so there, there goes your final answer for the double angle identities, I mean half angle identities, identity for cosine. Okay, all right. Now let's move on to uh, the last one which is 10. So for part three, um, we're going to prove, prove that, write this down, prove that um, tan alpha over two equals uh, let's see, equals the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. And is also equal to 1 minus cosine alpha over sine alpha. And is also equal to sine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. All right, so that's what we're going to prove here. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, so first thing we're going to use is the whole idea that uh, we're going to use the quotient identities. We know that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. This is the quotient identities for uh, tan. So using this idea, we know that tan alpha over 2 is equal to sine alpha over 2 
divided by cosine alpha over 2. Okay? Alright, so what is sine alpha over 2? We had just derived it. Uh, sine alpha over 2 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 2 divided by plus or minus cosine alpha over 2 just derived as being the square root of 1 uh, plus cosine alpha over 2. Okay, let me see how I wrote it out here. Oh uh, yeah, plus 1 or 1 plus is the same thing. It doesn't really matter because, you know, addition commutes. Okay, so well, with that in mind, in this case, considering the quadrantile angles, this plus or minus is do cancel out because whenever this is minus, this is minus also. The signs basically follow each other. I mean, this is plus and this is plus. So the signs always travel with each other. So when you take the quotient of both of them, the signs actually cancel out to positive, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two radicals. So I'm going to have this the square root. Let me do that again. I'm going to have, um, I'm going to use a line here because it's a little bit long. A square root of, using the properties of radicals, a square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 2 divided by 1 plus cosine alpha over 2. Okay? Alright, so I'm going to now uh, multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. So I have the square root of uh, the numerator first, 1 minus cosine alpha over 2 times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 2 over 1 plus cosine alpha. Okay? Now the 2's divide out. In our final answer, which shows us the first result we wanted, is going to be the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. Okay, so this is tan alpha over 2. Alright, now this is uh, what the first one. We have two more to show. We know we have three variations for tan alpha over 2. Now, if I, if I I'll play around with this, work, do some identities with this, what, what can we get? Well, let's see. So, uh, for the second part, we can call this 3b. I'm going to write tan alpha over 2 equals the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. Now, what if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator? The conjugate of this is 1 minus cosine alpha. You get that by switching the middle sign and then 1 minus cosine alpha. When I distribute this out, what I'll get is as follows. I'm going to have the square root. In the numerator, when you... Uh, I'm going to write it as 1 minus uh, cosine alpha square. And in the denominator, you have a difference of squares, right? So you know a plus b times a minus b. If you follow it out, it's a square minus b square because the center terms cancel out. So it's going to be 1 square, which is 1, minus cosine square alpha. Okay? All right. Now, this denominator looks like... Uh, and a trig identity that I can substitute. Okay, so thinking about your Pythagorean identity, I can write this as, this is going to be the square root of uh, 1 minus cosine alpha square over, and then the denominator, uh, remember your Pythagorean identity, 1 minus cosine square theta is equal to sine square theta, because sine square theta plus cosine square theta is 1. So when you subtract 1 from cosine squared theta, you have sine squared theta. So this denominator can be substituted with sine squared alpha. All right? Now using the properties of radicals, this becomes the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha squared over the square root of sine squared alpha. Okay? And now that simplifies the numerator, the square and the square root divide out. We have 1 minus cosine alpha over in the denominator, the square root and the square cancel out over sine alpha. 
Okay, and that basically shows uh, the second uh, half angle identity for tan that we were supposed to derive. All right. Okay, now how about the third part, uh, 3C? Uh, the third part, 3C, we just play around with this and see what happens. Uh, we have tan alpha over 2 equals 1 minus cosine alpha over sine alpha. Now, what if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by, by this uh, numerator right here? What, what, what happens? Uh, actually, what if I multiply by the conjugate? Actually, the conjugate of the numerator. All right, if I multiply by conjugate of the numerator, uh, I'm going to have multiply by 1. You switch the middle sign plus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. And then when you times it out, this is a difference of squares. So when you follow that, the center terms cancel out. So you just have the square of the first minus the square of the second term. Divided by any denominator, you have sine alpha times 1 plus cosine alpha. Okay. Now, this is an identity we just talked about up here. We said that 1 minus cosine square alpha is sine square alpha. is one of the Pythagorean identities. So uh, I'm going to make a substitution here. All right. How about I replace the top with sine square alpha divided by sine alpha times 1 plus cosine alpha, okay? Now I can reduce this, this is sine alpha to the 1, so sine alpha goes here 1 and goes here 1. So what we're left with in the numerator is going to be simply be sine alpha divided by in the denominator 1 plus cosine alpha, and that is basically what tan alpha over 2 is, okay? So this is the third variation of the half angle identities for tan, all right? So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Uh, if you like the video, you can click like. Please, please, please post a comment. Tell me what you think about this presentation. Uh, more clips can be found on mat.serve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.